We're now going to make a reservation starting from the control screen. It's a logical spot to start. I'm going to come in on June the 1st for room 408. I'm going to highlight these four cells and rele release my mouse. So there's my arrival date, June the 1st. Four nights, let's say two adults. Let's hop across to the reservation program now and see what my availability is. Of course, we know there's a room available. The question is, what at what rates are we selling it? Now, this is the selling script that the reservation clerks use to sell the rooms. This is a key differentiator of our software and other. You'll see on the form behind there's no finder for the rate because you don't get to choose from the list of all available rates. You, get, you just get to choose from the ones that are, you're allowed to choose from. All right. So I'm showing here my rack high rate. I'm showing also my rack low rate, which I know is a reactive rate. It will turn off when I hit 70% occupancy. That's how I have it set up. And I follow with my packages. So I'm leading with my high rate. If I get price resistance, I'm falling back to my lower rates. And I'm following with my rate with my packages. You may instead to, des to, to decide to lead with your lowest rate if you're in a competitive situation. Or perhaps you will lead with your packages. There's no right and wrong way. You decide what rates you're going to have. You decide when those rates are going to be available. And you decide what order they're going to be presented in, in this selling script. So you don't have to have a little meeting with your staff to say, sell these rates, don't sell these rates. You set the rules, and this shows the, uh, your reservations clerk what to sell for. And if you're not sure, I can come down here from my romance package. I can right click to, and get more detail. I get a nice description of my room type, tranquil modern decor, very quiet, equipped with fun and work accessories. I get a description of the actual room itself, and I get a description of the package, which in this case is a two-night stay, includes room service, breakfast, fruit basket, bottle of wine, and a massage. So you can just read the marketing text out. The reservations clerk doesn't have to remember all the detail. They can right click and read it out. This is a big deal. It saves a great deal of time. And you can see here that my rack low rate, which is active, has a different deposit rule and a different cancel rule than my rack high. So we're able to have multiple rates uh, available at the same time. So let's pick one of these rates. I'm going to pick my rack high rate and I'm going to say OK. So I've got an arrival date, I've got a departure date, I've got a room, I've got a rate. The next thing I need is a guest. Now I'm going to do a returning guest here to give you an example of how easy it is to do a returning guest. You ask for the fellow, you say, have you stayed with us before? He says, yes, my name is Robert Campbell. You key in all or part of his last name and press the finder or searcher key and it hops into the guest file at CAMP. Now if we had 50 Campbells it would be at the top of the Campbells and you'd search down. If it had 50 Robert Campbells you'd start and you'd have to search down perhaps on phone number or mobile phone or the city. So we're able to pick Robert Campbell and the credit, I have a credit card on file for Mr. Campbell. I have a Visa card, last four digits, 4327. This is very sensitive information. Our credit card file is encrypted for extra security, but it's still sensitive information. So you decide if this is a service you want to provide for your guests or not. You're certainly going to keep the credit card from the time the reservation is made until a few days after he leaves. But will you keep it longer than that or not for your returning guests? I'm going to say yes. The last piece of information I need is the source of business. This particular guest is a returning guest, so I'll do that. I have everything I need now to make the reservation. Oh, this warns me. Mr. Campbell is a very popular guest at my, uh, my property. And this tells me I have another open reservation. So not a historical reservation, but another one uh, just in case he's done a double booking. Okay? Of course, we can easily go and look and see when that is. We get a nice summary screen now that comes up that says, Mr. Campbell, you're arriving on June the 1st. You're staying for four nights, departing on June the 5th. You're in room 408. In my dreamland utopia boutique hotel, the rate's 275, the total 1214 with the taxes. 
the rate, the deposit rule, cancel rule, confirmation number 2658. Remember to book for the big New Year's Eve gala. So a nice little summary screen that comes up. There's 2658. If I hop across to my control program, we'll see that reservation showing there, 2658 right here. It's all in real time. So that was an example of doing a reservation from the control screen for a specific room. The next example we're going to give is making a reservation, an unallocated reservation. So rather than make a reservation for a specific room, we're going to make a reservation for a room type and we'll allocate the room itself later, perhaps the day before, perhaps on check-in. So it's much the same as what we did on the first screen. We highlight the cells we want. I want a double deluxe room and I want it for these four nights, Thursday through Sunday. I highlight it, arriving June the 3rd for a double deluxe, four nights, one adult. This time I'm going to do a corporate booking as well as an example. This is a qualified rate. You have to be 3M to get this rate and let's go take a look and see what we've got. Hops across here and shows us that the rate for 3M is our corporate one rate which is 175. Now the going rate, the rack rate for this room is 275, so it's a substantial saving uh, that this corporate tier one is getting. Now you might have uh, tier one, two, three, or as many corporate rates as you like. We've assigned corporate rate one to 3M, so this comes up. You don't have to fool around. You've attached a rate to the corporate. When the corporate makes a booking, their rate automatically pops in. Other rates don't come in, as you can see just their rate. If I want to look at other rates I can, this has security on it of course, but normally you would just take that. And the default is it says, do you want one room? It's filled a one in there for me. Okay. So I've got the corporate account and now it's going to come to the guest, but I'm not going to specify the guest because the corporate booking, they're going to tell me who the guest is later. So I'm going to get the rooming list on this room at a later time. We're getting the booking now. However, they are going to tell me that 3M is paying for the room. So I can specify here that 3M is going to pay for the room. When we add a guest, that guest will be the extra charge guest. That'll be for the incidentals. So 3M can pay for the room. The in-room guest will pay for the incidentals, easily accommodating a split folio. Perhaps we have a purchase order number so that we can bill back to 3M with that purchase order number, and we've got everything we need to make the reservation. So the booking here, arriving June the 3rd for four nights, departing June the 7th. This time it's for 3M Technologies, reservation 2659. Remember to book the big New Year's Eve gala. Okay, we hop across to the control screen now and we'll see in real time the numbers have all decremented down. That did say 5566, five, six. it's now gone down by one. If we go across to the room tab here, there is no colored bar for this reservation because we've not allocated it to a room. Instead, it's up in these numbers right here, the unallocated. If I double click that six there on Tuesday, on Thursday, June the 3rd, we will see the booking I just did right here. Well, we don't see the booking. Yes, we do. Right there, 3M. 2659, 3M, purchase order 1234. I just have to look and see. So this tells me all the rooms I have where I have not got a room, uh, but I have a room type. Okay, if we want to uh, assign the room for that, I can double click this. I can come into here and I can allocate the room. Press the allocate button it comes up and it shows me all the rooms that match what I've asked for. In this case here, I can take 409 and say OK. Very simple to allocate the room as well. So again, this was an example of making a reservation, an unallocated reservation, and it was a corporate reservation. In this example, we're going to make a reservation from the reservation program rather than starting in the control program. So we'll press the new button. We'll have our arrival date June the 1st for two nights, departing June the 3rd 
for two adults and let's go see what's available for those dates. It comes up and shows me my rack high rates for certain room types, then my rack low rates, followed by my package rates. So this is what's available and you can see the different room types, double deluxe rack high, double deluxe rack low, and so on coming down the page. I'm going to get a double deluxe room with the romance package right there. So I'm going to select my romance package. You remember we can right click this and it'll show us details about the room type in this case and about the romance package itself. So I'm going to pick that room. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a guest. And this time I'm going to do a new guest to show you how that works. So I'm going to come across here and do George Smith. Do I want to add a new guest? Yes, I do. And certain of the fields turn blue. So I have it configured to show certain things about my guest. And you decide which fields are mandatory when adding a new guest. So for instance, I have a couple of fields here for guest segmentation. I've called it guest geographic and guest class. These could be anything you like. So as an, for, as an example, uh, guest geographic, uh, he's going to be uh, a national guest. Uh, and he's going to be an uh, individual. Uh, we have tax information about it. And then we have, in my case, I'm capturing uh, the postal address and the phone number. Uh, you capture whichever fields you want to capture. And is it okay to use the email? Of course, it's okay to use the email address for this reservation. Is it okay to use this email for marketing purposes? Basic contact information on the new guest. You can see there's much more information we're going to capture over the fullness of time, but not yet. Uh, to start with, a guest will share basic contact information. Okay, so we've saved that information on the guest in the guest file. Now we're attaching that guest to the reservation. The next question is, how would you like to guarantee that reservation? In this case, what's your credit card number? This is your list of credit card numbers. We enter the credit card number. And we enter the expiry date and the name on the card. Okay, and whatever else you need to do a non-card transaction. So this is guaranteeing the card. If you have a cancellation charge, you'll be char charging it against this credit card. All right. Visually, we see that red X on the credit card button went to a green tick mark to say, yes, we've got the credit card. If you're chatty like me and you're not sure where you are on the reservation, there's a visual reminder of what's on, of what's up. One more thing to ask, where did you hear about us from? So what's the source of business? This is your list, user defined, so you decide what's going to be in here and you can just ask, where did you hear about us from? I'm going to say our website. Okay, so we've got everything we need here to make the reservation and I'm going to save that in the file. So again, we get a nice little summary that comes up that we can read back to the guest. The other thing I wanted to show you on this particular one was for this particular reservation, uh, the, the package objects here are breakfast, a fruit basket, a bottle of wine, and the massage. This is showing me the revenue allocation for that. There was a single price that the guest was going to pay. This is the revenue allocation here. For the breakfast, we can see two breakfasts a day for two nights, four breakfasts in total. This particular reservation also has a deposit owing of $550, which is the full amount. I can now collect that deposit. I press the pay deposit button. Do I want to bill it to the credit card I used uh, when I made the reservation? Yes, I do. And it hops across to the payment program and fills everything in except the six-digit number that returns back from your credit card machine. So. 
uh, you key in the credit card number. This is the only place in the system where you can see the full credit card number because this is where you're going to be keying it into the machine and the expiry and any other information that you need uh, to do that non-card transaction. And as I said, there's security on this. It's now logged an entry into a security file uh, with the time, with the date, with my user ID and this credit card. Now, alternately, we can use a credit card gateway and this process is automatic. It automatically returns back that authorization number and we post the payment, the deposit on to the reservation. If we go look at the guest folio, we'll see what's going on here on this particular reservation. We'll see there's the payment, $550. Now this is unearned income. This is not income yet. This is just a deposit. Uh, when the reservation um, uh, after the two nights of the reservation, these charges will move from the bottom, the anticipated folio, up to the actual folio. And if he charges nothing else to the room, uh, he will owe us nothing at checkout. So we can see these are the lines that are going to appear on the folio without the breakout. On the, on the object tab, we showed the breakout to do the revenue allocation. So this was an example of a reservation that had a package and it has it had a deposit and we started from the reservation screen and we added a new guest. Of course there are many other types of reservations that I could show you uh, but rather than waste your time I'll just mention a couple uh, being able to book your meeting rooms for a full event planning being able to do groups corporate groups uh, wedding groups with meeting rooms and AV equipment and sleeping rooms and and food and beverage uh, being able to book um, one one guest with two rooms or one room with two guests one paying or both paying a great variety of other sorts of reservations can all be accommodated and if you want to see other types of reservations by all means contact us and we'll show you those sorts of reservations as well